Hello, one and all, and welcome back to another thrilling episode of Off the Dome. I'm your humble interviewer, Jordan Brown, and with me, as always, is our incredible interviewer. Say hi, incredible interviewer. Hi, incredible interviewee. Was that it? I'm sorry. Hi. I yeah, sort of was... dissociated the last play, uh, like the last <laughs> little piece there. <laughs> it was interviewer, since that's, you know, your whole thing, but that's fine. Oh, interviewee works. No, um, I get it. No, that was my bad. I messed that up. Can we try again? <laughs> Do you actually want to try again? Or can I just leave all this incredibleness in? I'm going to try again for the cut. So this is, I I just want people to know that I list, I can listen and I can do it. Mm -hmm. I want that to sort of be on my track record. So you can keep it all, but I do want a correct version. Okay. And we'll do take two and hello one and all. And welcome back to another thrilling episode of Off the Dome. I'm your humble interviewer, Jordan Brown. And with me as always is our incredible interviewer. Say hi, incredible interviewer. Hi, incredible interviewer. Nailed it. Thank in you. one, absolutely crushed it. Um, I enunciated that. I think is the most important part of these intros is I want people to yeah. understand what I'm saying. Yes, very much so. Um, uh, for the folks at home, because uh, I'll <laughs> cut the very beginning of this. To me, Vic is in the wildest slow motion that you could possibly is imagine. It still? It still is. I think right now you're saying in my video, you're saying hi, incredible interviewee. Why? Um, and it's like you going like, it's very fun. Um, uh, but I can hear you great. And that's the really important thing. That's the really um, important thing. Yes. Uh, Matt, Vic, thank you so much for joining me again. My first repeat solo guest, um, which is amazing um, thrilled to be here a second time um i've noticed that i keep calling to just chit chat and say hi and you keep saying save it for the pod save it yeah save it for the yeah. interview um hey, which is hurtful we don't but... have each other's phone numbers as much as i would like that um uh, <laughs> but um so speaking very specifically of that um i uh, uh made a video a where bird? i was that was my child okay um, <laughs> Um, I, I made a video, uh, so at our first interview, someone, so, someone that watched it was like, it's like watching two people discover their best friends, which is delightful and wonderful. No, um, it's like uh, one and... person discovering their best friends. I knew we were going to be best friends. Uh, so it's, <laughs> wa- it's watching one person discover that actually. Uh, well, fine. Um, I knew that information and I came in guns a blazing. <laughs> Yeah, well, you you crushed it, and everyone agreed. Um, but Thank I made you. a video about that where I made that sentence, I said that statement, and someone commented on that video. I feel like everyone who's around Vic feels like they're Vic's best friend, and I was like, ninety nine percent of the videos about Vic on the internet that would have been very much a compliment. You chose the one <laughs> video where it fully undercut me as a human being. Um, no, Jordan, so. they're wrong. It's you and me. We're best friends. We're going on a road trip at some point. All right. We'll do a, <laughs> a pottery class. Okay. You know, like they're yeah. wrong. They're wrong. Yes. And you're right. Thank goodness. That was, I was very concerned. Um, I did have a very <laughs> specific question for you to start. Please. The last time we spoke, it was 2023. It's now 2024. Can you sure. tell me? How much money you made as a horse therapist in 2023? Oh, man. Not going well so far, uh, I'll say. Uh, You know, it's like people say New Year, New You, and I guess horse therapy out, whatever, bird therapy in, I guess, something like that, you know? Um, See, you're on the trend. You have a bird in your room. So it's, you know, Mm -hmm. it feels like maybe that's the route that people are going. That is so funny. That is a video that my father saw and said, I don't understand this. You should not post this on the internet. And I said, do it. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? That's got a ton of views. People love it, I think. Um, I think mostly people were deeply confused by it, which honestly, I'll take it. I love it. Yeah. Speaking of deeply confusing, very mm-hmm. important people. Sure. Um, <laughs> what an episode Nana was. Um, we're six days out. I have not mm-hmm. recovered. Um, <laughs> I still, like, routinely am thinking about, you absolute son of a bitch, you won't die. Um, sure. And, like, laughing to myself. Because when that moment happened, like... The, all of the air escaped my body as I like wheeze <laughs> laughed so hard. I started like coughing fits. Like it was incredible. 
Um, has anyone talked to you yet about the Emmy you're definitely going to win for that episode? Oh, wow. No, honestly, it's like, it's... First, yes. <laughs> that one was like a truly such a trip to record because, I mean, like, I don't know how much people have discussed, uh, like, on the Discord or throughout things. I know Tamara's talked about it a little bit, but how we record a lot of those episodes is we'll sort of do, like... 15 minute chunks people sort of like set props to bring in like it's not like we're really like discussing anything during those cuts it's mostly just like a cut for camera so that way something can get reset that way we're not just recording like two minutes of dead air or somebody can grab a water or whatever because we record these for like 45 minutes an hour and this one um we literally went for an hour straight there was like i don't think we did any green screen cutaways we literally just did an hour straight and i think that there is maybe a world where that whole thing i mean probably not but there is a world where like there's at least another like 10 minutes in there that could just get released i'm almost positive um i mean it was incredible yeah there are no green screen no green screen cuts I don't there think they did like, any pulls for it. Like, I don't even think yeah. that, like, normally there's but, moments where we, like, point to it and we stop for a second. And I literally, in this one, don't even think there was any moments that we, like, threw to it. Yeah, no, the only thing that, that gets called for is the book um, uh, that came out. Um, uh, her her beautiful poetry about your grandfather. Um, which was a book of nails it was like one of those ones where when you go to a salon like at and they open it and it's just like a bunch of different acrylic nails that is what that was mm -hmm. mm. um yeah i that was that was one of my questions delightful yeah i think the only I'm so like sorry <laughs> oh, oh no, no no now i know the answer to that i would rather it come naturally than me having to like look down at my notes um uh, and like try to formulate a question um look at yeah, us the only two best friends the... reading each other's minds exactly um the only edit I feel like I noticed in the episode is when they clearly had, like, reset the set itself. Because um, they came in and cleaned things up after you and Nana nearly uh, uh, came to blows. Sure. Um, the thing is, like, I... So I will say, sort of, of recording this episode specifically, it is truly a, a fever dream. I don't... Mm -hmm. um, I and also this one came I believe at like the end of the day somewhere so this I believe is like the last one that we filmed at some point um so it was just like this one was a true fever dream I don't even know what was happening in that time where it was getting cleaned up and I don't even think it was a full cut I think we were still doing things as things were getting cleaned but I think probably just not the most interesting thing to watch the set get cleaned up <laughs> um oh, I do, so yeah, I incredible. Uh, so speaking, but speaking of nails, uh, how did they taste? Are they as awful as I imagine? Well, here's what I'll say: Have you ever had like acrylics or your nails painted or anything like that? I've had my nails painted, not acrylics, mm. though. Well, I mean, like I'm somebody that like I like having nail polish on just so that way I can pick at it and chew it off, basically. And so it is. Mm. Um, I would say not as gross or uh it, what it wasn't an unfamiliar taste is what i'll say i just feel like the couple of times i've had acrylic nails i just like in order to get them off i think it's probably disgusting but i'll just like chew on them just because they're like big and weird and you have to apparently pay to go to a salon to get them taken off a lot of times and i don't or have the... just just be a lisa gilroy and just rip that rip up straight off. bad boy right um, off yeah uh, yeah Absolute you know, pretty nightmare strong for that. that was. Um, <laughs> so yeah. crunchy. I think that that was probably yeah. uh, that. That also might have had some help from TJ, who was our um, sound sound designer. Uh, but it, mm -hmm. it did also sound gross in the moment. So really, who knows? <laughs> yeah, uh, I. Oh uh, man, uh, what I just uh, I absolutely it definitely felt like it was the end of a long day of shooting um, in the best possible way in the sure. like. Because uh, um, I don't know if I mentioned to you. No, I don't think I did. So the last time, uh, since the last time we talked, I started doing like charity interviews uh, where people Whoa. can buy their time with me. Um, and um, uh, like my selling point was like, you'll be like Vic or Abria or Carlos and like these wow. like really cool people. Um, and I thought no one was going to want to do it. And boy, was I mistaken. Um, so Is this a full time job now? Is that what's happened? <laughs> It's basically, yeah, I'm drowning in this. Uh, um, but, but hey, we've ra I've raised like 
fourteen hundred dollars for Doctors Without Borders. So like, it's it's not bad. That's, um, that's insane, Jordan. That's amazing. Yeah. Um. But like, so Monday because I was off work, I was just like, what if I treated it like a work day? Um. And just did interviews for like six hours straight, and that's what I did. And oh boy, I don't have any idea what happened at the end of the day. Um, no, of course uh, not. It, well, it's it's gone. And like, I know in that last interview, I was like. I don't know what I've said to this person versus anyone else that I have said all day. At least with yours, you they're very dis- distinct. Um, I guess I'm going to upload them to YouTube. I don't know what to do with them. Um, Didn't get that far. That happens yeah. all the time. Um, welcome to the the club, I guess. It's like the, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's a great idea. Um, and honestly, what if this is like the weird, like not weird. What if this is like the, the interesting thing that you find? And you're like, oh, this is like, this is this new niche that I didn't even know was there. Cause I'm sure there is a niche of people being like, I want to be interviewed. And it seems like there is, it seems like you found it already. And I'm just sort of saying what you've done um, to this oh, point. Oh boy. Well, your audio has now cut out. So I don't know if you're still no, talking. It, it felt like, okay, great. It's back. Um, um, it felt like you were coming to the end of a sentence with like an interesting niche. People want to be interviewed. And I was like, funny, probably doesn't have anything to say after that. Um, but because the, the beautiful thing is I don't have any visual cues as to whether or not like jokes are landing or anything like that. Um, well, Jordan, I have no here's, I- Jordan, here's what I'm going to tell you is a, so much of what I say is maybe like a somewhat of a half setup on something with absolutely no follow through. So the fact that like I'm getting a little bit of that setup and it seems like maybe something funny is going to come is kind of a perfect situation for me. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. Um, I, I so I have to jump back because I know we talked about the Emmys, and you immediately you dismissed talked me about the Emmys. <laughs> you immediately dismissed me. I've spoken to Sam about it already. Um, that's how seriously I took this. Um, uh, that um, uh, that obviously, when you submit very important people for the Emmy, that's the episode that you choose in the submission process. Um, so as the first person to talk to you about this, do I get sure. a shout out during your Emmy acceptance speech? I mean, listen, if it gets there, I will uh, absolutely, uh, I'll go, I'll go, you know, my, my family, um, three, obviously, um, in that number three spot, um, I'll sort of like sell that second position. And then Jordan is Jordan is number one. I can, I, I can uh, guarantee you that if we, if we win, <laughs> that is what's going to happen. Great. Can't wait to put that on my sizzle reel. Of, <laughs> um, my, my TikTok trailer. I don't know what that would be. Yeah. Your um, TikTok trailer. Yeah. That's a thing, right? Um, Could be. Uh, yeah. Um, how is your stepdaughter doing? Bianca, so good. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> it is really funny. Like, I'm I'm not somebody that reads a lot of comments just because I feel like it can get out of hand so quickly. And it's one of yep. those things where as soon as you start reading the good ones, you got to start and you start reading and believing the good ones. You start reading and believing the bad ones. And it's just not bad ones. But, you know, like everybody's got strong opinions, even on stuff that is you know, that you're proud of and that and that you like. And so I like I really try and listen to a small group of people that I I know and trust and like whose opinions and who I know in real life and things like that. And that's usually what I try and listen to. Um, But uh, what was the question? Bianca. I'm so sorry. Oh, Bianca. Right. Uh, one of the ones that I did see sort of as I was on the Discord, because uh, I sort of popped in for a little bit for that chat was somebody had sort of um, mentioned they were like, oh, you know, like, it's probably an accident, but there's like a there ends up being like a lot of lore and a lot of backstory with stuff like uh, this was like the stepdaughter and the husband. And I'm like, I can't tell you how much Tamar and I, how much thought and energy we put into this character having like <laughs> a deep and realized backstory. Like it wasn't totally mapped out like what it would be, but also because shooting is out of order. Um, this is something that like was nice because coming into this Lisa episode, some of that had been established previously and some of the other episodes that will just I think because of the schedule end up coming later but uh it ended up being really lovely having some of those touch points uh to come back to in an episode that was like so wild especially in like a a family sense having some of those family members to come back to and reasons to want the interview to go well I think was the big thing like for me mostly that whole interview was just like look for reasons that this is important and that this has to go really well for me, uh, especially for somebody that I hate, you know, not hate, but you know, somebody yeah. that the history is so fraught. Yes. 
yeah uh, uh, yeah i uh, i will certainly say as someone who reads a lot of comments um <laughs> oh boy the negative ones sure do stick with you much more than the positive ones do um because it's just how it is. Also, like I taught for a bunch of years at like the college level, and no way, I still what? think about the negative reviews, uh, journalism mostly, and like digital media stuff. Jordan, uh, that is so cool. I, I mean, there were some very cool things. No, that happened. it is so cool. It's All cool right. to have All as right. a title, and now the fact that you're like doing it, and I'm sure your students are there being like Jordan. Occasionally, someone will be like, "Oh my god!" Like. Like, they'll come across my TikTok organically and be like, you taught me, like, how to tweet. And I'm like, yeah, I'm still doing it, just in a different place. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, um, oh, I also do want to flag, because I don't think you can see it all the way. It does say, don't mess with Texas women. It doesn't say, don't mess with Texas. It's a Planned Parenthood shirt. Um, I love so, it. Look at that. Yeah. It is that fun okay. thing with crops sometimes to be like, I feel like I have some shirts like that that are like message shirts playing on other shirts. And I'm like, you've got, you have to read the whole. Um, yeah. Like, you have to read the I don't whole want thing. you to think I'm like, yeah, don't mess with Texas. Uh, like, big fan of our government here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> love <but> it here. <laughs> also, did I choose this shirt specifically because you were coming on today? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Um, oh, uh, love it. Jordan, thank you. <clears throat> Um, so beginning, very beginning of the interview. Sure. Lisa says, I think is, you know who I am when you say to introduce yourself. Is there a full moment of panic in your head where you're like, I have to now create the character that Lisa is going to play? Or did you just instantly be like, Nana, let's go. So at this point in the interview, sort of how it was working with these reveals was um, the one thing that I had wanted and the only thing that I'd really wanted from these characters was just what their name was going to be. That way I could, because um, some of the characters had, um, as you'll see a little later on, some trickier, well, I think they released all the names of the characters. So like, uh, yes. there's there's a couple in particular that had some French names that I was like, I would like these names beforehand, <laughs> that way I can... That way I'm not like spending like five minutes of the interview being like one more time, please. Like, uh, so <laughs> it was sort of like people, uh, Tamar would sort of like fly in right before the interview would be like, uh, uh, this is the, the name of the character that you're going to meet. And that was basically what we would jump off of, uh, at, at that point. Um, I, uh, like I know, um, uh, well, actually, that's not my show, so I'm not going to say because I don't know how much is said about how that process works. Um, if you want to time out, I'll I'll tell you what I was going to say. Uh, I'll cut it. But uh, what if a time for out. the audio to cut out right as you're about to reveal something about a different dropout show, and in the edit, it's going to seem like you just kept talking and I interrupted you in whatever your thought was about Smarty Pants. No, it's uh, it's, ah. here. I'll, I'll, t I'm doing a timeout, but I realized you can't see my hand. If you're willing to, <laughs> oh my gosh. Out, I'll tell you the show. I got, I, I can see your hands in a timeout <laughs> position. It's, um, uh, for it, uh, I mean, Comedy Bang Bang does that. It's like, again, I don't think it's a oh. secret, but like before you go in, yeah. you're like, uh, Scott asks what your name is and what your character is, and he writes it down and stuff like that. I, it's just not my show. Uh, so I'm like, I'm not prepared to, like, I don't know how much he has said about that process. I'm sure it's not a secret, but that is how that works. And for me, I was like, oh, that's a, it's so helpful going into it. So that's basically what, what we did going into it was we sort of got the name. So I was comfortable saying it, and then we <laughs> moved on from there. <laughs> Sorry, my extra laugh there was uh, you're you're still in like slow motion for me. Um, and I'm so like you had, my hands. Well, you had done like a small oh. timeout, and then you did a huge timeout, um, and I just got to the huge timeout. So, um, yeah. Um, um, also, like comedy bang bang, what a fantastic like model to follow for so many things, but. Yeah, 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 and it's like it's one of those things where you know the show is very different, but I did you know, listen to a, a lot of the show because I think Scott just does such a wonderful job as an interviewer interviewing improvisers, which seems to be like, I'm sure there are plenty out there, but of ones that like were in my orbit and that I sort of like knew about that, that was sort of the, obviously the the big one. Ours is, you know, obviously different with it being sort of a character that's also, oh, Scott's mm -hmm. a character too, but you know, it's a, uh, with the VFX makeup and like having the full costumes and stuff like that, it, you know, it is, it is different and being filmed is, is a different experience, but I mean, you know, it was just so helpful uh, in on the interviewing side of things to watch how he does it. Yeah. Um, how, like, 
I feel like there are a couple of moments that you almost break in this episode, mm-hmm. specifically when you're screaming that she's pinching you. Um, how on earth did you not lose it so much more than that? I will say, like, it's so tough. It's so hard because, like, there are, is truly only one episode where I really completely lost it and it was the last episode we shot on the last day which is the zako yama episode and that is yeah, that... the only episode where i completely lost my mind and there's one moment and when it comes to it i can't wait to chat about it but it is like there's truly one episode on there's only one episode where i like i it's it's the kind of thing of like you're so you're so in it for the most part that it is um that was just a moment of like already something so physical is happening that it is like it was sort of like a natural, like, I can't believe this is happening more than a, a full break. You know what I mean? Where it's just like, what am mm-hmm. I doing? Like, I, uh, what am I doing? I'm on the ground. Um, but I mean, uh, uh, those moments, like it was a little easier to rein it, rein it in, especially because of like the gravity of the situation. And like, I mean, this is going to sound so, um, like, a like not crazy, but what is it? Like, so like actually, but it's, you know, like it, it's, you're quite in the moment and in character with stuff like that. So it's a lot easier to come, come back to that uh, uh, with things like that. And not to say that uh, Zach wasn't deeply in character in his, cause I mean, you're going to see it. He lost himself and I don't know that he's ever come back. So. Yeah, no, I, I, I believe Zach posted about Tommy Shrigley that <laughs> if he had spent five more minutes as him, he would have never returned. Um, yeah. So. But that one was yeah. a perfect storm of being last one we shot last day and Zach just like truly d- disappearing in he, that character. He dumps protein powder into your face in the trailer. So like, I'm sure the whole thing is wild. I'll um, tell you, Jordan, wasn't even that moment. That wasn't even the moment. Oh, There's wonderful. One, there was Rick. like a full, I think we had to stop for a true five minutes for, to, for me to calm down. <laughs> Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. It is the one. Um, I really hope he's not last. I have no idea what order they're in. Because um, it was the one that I most want to talk to the makeup folks about. By the way, um, uh, they finally noticed me begging them to talk to them. So Amazing. we're gangbusters there. Um, uh, I think I got to t- touch with Anna. Um, oh, great. Or Alex. I don't remember who because I sent so many messages. But it was one of those like blanket, like, I want to talk to all of you. Um, things um i'm talking to tomorrow tomorrow that's oh amazing. a fun thing to say uh, do you have any like fun perspectives i'm so sorry <laughs> no, no 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 um i was i was just gonna ask if you had anything that like i could ask tomorrow that will make me sound smart oh i mean um she is just like so brilliant when it comes to the film it's really she's she is incredible she doesn't have a ton of like improv experience but she is so strong in like story and aesthetic and like uh but especially story with something like this where like it was a perfect storm and we didn't meet each other until like the week before we started filming and then we sort of had meetings and sort of like slowly realized that we were like truly like a perfect pair we had the exact same like sense of humor and um uh sort of like idea of what we wanted to do with the especially the character of host Vic that it really just like I think her um her sense of story is just so strong that I think I mean you can see it already in these first few episodes like how like you know especially doing like an hour of improv cobbling something together into like a cohesive storyline is almost impossible and I think she does such an incredible job of it while also keeping in those moments that like I mean like cut into little clips for social media as well something you can say to sound smart math do you know math no okay i I told you i taught journalism of course i don't know right right. well okay you how about that you can say something um say something really say something really smart about um uh the history of journalism Mm, i bet you know it she's so smart too um yeah something to make you sound smart let me think on it okay yeah, one of my uh, deep, deep-seated fears is um, I feel like at some point I'm probably going to talk to Brennan, just like the way the, my world is happening. Um, sure. And there's uh, someone who I adore deeply. Uh, her name is Rowan, and she's interviewed Brennan a few times. And every question she asks Brennan is like capital A, like like plus, 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 plus question. Like Brennan is lost for a moment of like, 
like has to like take a like a like a, a moment of introspection and then it's like that's such a good question i'm like i can never do that um yeah. like, you are everyone's too smart for me um yes Jordan, my interviews are just me all over the place boat. Uh, same boat absolutely yeah. i am the inverse of that in that somebody will ask me a question i will immediately start answering i don't even know what the question was i'm gonna start talking i'm gonna start talking yeah. fast i'm gonna start talking so fast i don't know what i was saying previous to that um and then i go did that answer your question and for the most part <laughs> the answer is no but people are too polite to say that so we move on <laughs> Oh, perfect. It's exactly the energy I want in these interviews, because I was talking to somebody about it, uh, and they were like, yeah, but your interviews are like, just like, friends chatting with each other. And I was like, I'll take it. Um, uh, that's as good as I can do. Um, the people's interviewer. You're the people's yes. interviewer, Jordan. Yes. Um, I'm the Vox Populi of Dropout. Um, uh, Say that. <laughs> Say it's that. Straight, it's just straight stolen from Dimension 20. Brennan introduced yes. me to the concept. Say um, that. <laughs> uh, oh, God. Um, uh, do you hate olives or was that character fit? Yes. Hate him. Hate him so much. Yeah, that same, was... 100%. 100% I was with you. I watched your face and I was like, that is the face I make when I eat an olive as well. Hate him. And it was like one of those, like, it, I... I know Lisa so well, uh, like we are just like, we performed a lot together. There was like, especially like right at the beginning when like we were both first at UCB, where like, we just ended up doing, we did like this failed CW pilot. Like it just like, we ended up working together constantly for a little bit. And so I do feel like I am very, very comfortable performing with Lisa. And I think anything short of basically spending a year, um, in very close proximity to each other. I don't know that we would have had the same results, especially on the physicality front. I know a lot of people were worried about that. Um, so I will say, no, we didn't talk about it beforehand, but also um, she's somebody that I'm like deeply, deeply comfortable with. And I think anything less than that, it probably wouldn't have been as physical as that, if that makes sense. Feel like you came to the end of a sentence? Oh no, Jordan! I got most of it. The wildest part is that you went anything short of, and then it completely cut out for me. And I was like, "What yes. an incredible time yes. to what do lose you think the I audio!" Said? What do you think I said? <laughs> I, I genuinely <laughs> don't like ripping your clothes off. That was the like it was the only thing I could think of that I was like, "What would have been short of what was in the episode?" I got. I don't. I don't have it. That's exciting because you're going to go back and it's going to be a complete <laughs> mystery to you. I'm going to start yep, leaving I... Easter eggs in those long sentences that I say. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, the thing about olives, too, is I love salty things. So my brain constantly is like, you probably like them now, right? And I hate them every time. And it's so frustrating. Um, I feel the same Jordan. way about cucumbers because I love pickles. And then I hate cucumbers. And I'm like, what? why? Yeah, it doesn't huh. make sense to me. And well, like, they're like gets... fresh. They're the fresh. Yeah. They're the fresh fruit. It's like, do you like? Well, I guess cra I was gonna say cranberries and grapes. Is that what? That's not right, is it? Those cranberries turns grapes turn to cranberries. No. Grapes turn to raisins. Grape turns to raisins. It's so it's sort of like that. It's to be like to like the raisin, but to be like grapes. Grapes yeah. not so much. It, it would be like that, but I find both of them fine. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I don't know what it is, and it's one of the. It's another one where like. Every couple of years, I'll try a cucumber and be like, no, I still hate this. Um, yeah. Uh, so it's exciting stuff over here. I'll tell you what. If you want to talk more about pickles, we just made some. And that's very good. It's a shame pickles are so cheap because making them for $8 was fun and they're delicious. But they were $8. And well, that is it the kind of thing stupid. that you bought the supplies and now you can yes. make them for... Okay, oh, no, so no. this is we a long-term buy-in. We, we bought one supply kit. I don't know if you can reuse the supply kit or not. Um, can you just keep reusing so. pickle water? I don't... Well, it doesn't I'll seem like a thing you should do. You can... We'll talk later. You can do... <laughs> you can make pickles without a kit, is what I'll say. Mm -hmm. uh, they may not taste as good, because I'm sure whatever seasoning they gave you was delicious. And also, too, I right. think uh, you run the risk of botulism but it is uh you can make them pretty easily by yourself and i believe yeah. in you thank you yeah it was a, a, a like stocking stuffer from my wife which was uh, like ace's stocking stuffer so um how but, fun yeah 
And now we have uh, delicious weird pickles in the fridge. Um, also, and I'm stealing this from someone's uh, uh, TikTok that I saw the other day, but when you bite into a pickle and you think it's going to be dill and it's bread and butter, what a fucking betrayal. Stop. Um, all right. No, Jordan. Are you a bread and butter person? Yes. Uh oh. Is this our first big fight? Oh, I think it no. might be. <laughs> I despise bread and butter pickles. Um, I want to eat wait, a pickle here's... and it's actually a little piece of candy. That's really what I want at the end of the day. <laughs> That's fair. Well, the good news is then on our road trip, if we get bread and butter pickles, you can have all of them. So, well, which would be perfect. Yeah. Um, are you a dill person as well, or just like prefer is, bread and butter? This is, this is my the hard hitting journalism that this I is, do. <laughs> this is my thing. Is I love fresh dill. I recently discovered that I love it, but I tried mm -hmm. regular pickles, which is what I'm going to call dill pickles. Is that right? Fair. Probably not, but that's sort of I feel like what you get with a sandwich or whatever. I'll mm -hmm. eat it if I have to, but it's I'm not gonna like it. Okay. Well there we go. We're we're good. I was gonna say pickle partners, but that seems weird and sexual. Mm -hmm. and I don't want it to be. Um good um good uh good people uh to sh to share yeah, a cut out after with. goods. So I can't wait to find out what you improvised <laughs> better than me. Right here, um, it's not uh, better than that. <laughs> Are you back? Great. Yeah, um, it literally was just me going good, and I think I I think you thought I cut out because then I just kept saying good, <laughs> good. Uh, um, God, I have the word I, my, in my notes. I have the words. Did you expect dot 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 question mark? And I don't know what I was gonna. I think just all of it. Um, did I expect? No, no, yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I like the one thing. It's so funny. Like seeing. Seeing Lisa in that hair and makeup, I was like, God, she looks like my grandmother. Like, I think it'd be like, what a fun, what a fun opportunity. And then I heard that she was coming out as Nana. And I was like, this is going to be, this is going to be great. I was like, I really did. It was like that energy of just being like, this is going to be a fun one. Um, and I'm happy that it, it like, I mean, again, it was like such a fever dream to film. But I think like after we filmed it, I was like, I think that's probably going to be a pretty fun one to watch. Uh, and yeah. I totally understand why it was a little bit polarizing for folks and some some people having a hard time with the watch. Uh, but uh, yeah. yeah, like, hey, content warnings aren't funny. I get that. The fact that the content warning was the moment Lisa came onto set to the end of the episode was a little funny. Like the content itself, like I, I get how important a content warning is fully like i understand people who can't watch it but the fact that it was like content warning it's bad from as soon as it starts to the end was at least mildly amusing to me you can watch yeah her trying out characters and then yeah. and the then you credits. have to stop uh, yeah <laughs> but do go um, watch uh, the credits yes they're, they're people work hard and people they deserve work hard. That, yes that's it's hard work um speaking of hard work how did i not know you were in upload as black and white lady oh sure probably because i was a recast of a character i was there for three episodes and then i did i wasn't there for the third season so well, that, then let's it talk would... shit about it so here's the thing about <laughs> upload boy what an interesting concept except for everything in the real world and wow did the show just really go after that part it's like no the the hellscape capitalism death part that like if you don't have enough money you get locked in a basement that's the interesting part the murder mystery who cares uh, yeah anyway yeah. you don't have to what say I'll, anything you want and to what i'll say on top of that is i had a lovely working experience if anybody wants to hire <laughs> me again i would love to be there oh, um so i feel yeah. like we sort of came in with equal energy and both had yeah. uh yeah important things to say about that <laughs> but i'm happy to um um I'm happy Continue to talk to work shit about live. that literally any any time um, we're not on camera. Perfect. <laughs> Anytime yeah. it's not being recorded. And the shit I yeah. wanted to say was what a wonderful experience. And I'm so <laughs> happy I had it. And I and I would love to work with any of those folks again. Mm -hmm. um, I'll do a real hard cut here, even though there won't be anything to cut out, just so it seems like you went off on like a wild tangent that like I had to cut at your insistence I had to cut out. Um, very really fun. Now you're you're drinking water for full thirty seconds. In my view, so that's delightful. Um, literally, literally perfect. Yeah. Um. Oh, but, but a great transition. Cough your water in your mug that you had to drink along with the mar whatever was in Lisa's cup at the. So end. I'm gonna be so vulnerable about how I take my coffee, and I don't want to hear about it. Which is, I like my coffee 
room temperature. And so how I achieve that, especially because I drink coffee literally all day, every day, uh, just of my everyday life. And how I'm able to do that is I do um, like a cup and then I take cold to room temperature water and I fill half with coffee, half with the room temperature water. I see judgment on your face. I see polite nodding. And I said, I don't want to hear it, Jordan. And I said, That's I don't so want to hear hard. it. That's wild. <laughs> Look, I don't so, like coffee, and that's wild. Uh, see, I've I'm, never had watered-down room-temperature coffee before. I so. love the taste of coffee, and so I would like to drink it all day. And so how I do that without going absolutely insane and being just like a ball of nerves is I, I cut it with room-temperature water, and so I'm drinking just cold coffee all day. And people mm -hmm. are like, oh, is the coffee good? No, it's Folgers. <laughs> you know what? But it is cheap. The thing about Folgers is uh, it's cheaper than the Costco brand, which I didn't know Costco allowed. Like, I didn't know there was ever going to be a time where you're like, what's better for the our bottom line? Our brand where we make all the profit uh, or someone else's brand where we only make a little bit. And it's like, turns out Folgers can only just be made cheaper. That is so crazy. I'm like, I literally, I mean, what happened was like, we used to get like the nicer coffee, but I was going through it in like days. Is is my heart okay? <laughs> Probably. Do you think? Uh, yeah, it's fine. I drink so many sparkling waters with caffeine in it um, all day, every day. That's, it's... I'm, no, I'm happy for you. I think, honestly, <laughs> being alive is tough. And so we get little treats for ourselves. And sometimes those little treats sort of make us look like little, you know, little garbage garbage folks and that's okay you know what i mean like my favorite type of coffee full disclosure like my truly favorite type of coffee is the instant coffee just like the nesquik instant coffee or whatever it is um and I, I i will do that i'll put it in like just about anything like any any kind of like i'll just do like half a glass of oat milk and then i'll do like two uh, two scoops of that and i'll mix it up and it's what a treat it's like ice cream you can freeze it <laughs> I mean, look, who needs the, what is it, Ninja? What was the thing that TikTok lost their minds about for like three months of people making ice cream? So you just, just oh, stir yeah. it and freeze it. You're the good creamy. to go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, those things that I was like, I very, I was very proud of myself because I resisted when I was like, I see everyone making this ice cream. The ice cream looks delicious. I would buy it and never use it. And I didn't buy it. Ooh, what a win on my part because nobody's making it anymore. No, nobody. Because at the end of the day, really, like, what can't, like, it's not going to be as good, but I'm like, yeah. you could just, you could just freeze. You could do a popsicle. You could do, you could yeah. do a popsicle and you could do a popsicle. Or I could go buy ice cream. For like, a lot, like, the amount of ice cream you would have to buy and consume in order to make the creamy worth it yeah. from, it is so high. It's too high. Yeah. You want to hear something insane? Jordan, I would love to. 2020, June 2020, sure. I became lactose intolerant. Didn't know that was a thing that could happen to adults. How um, did you find uh, out? You just got tested uh, and it was like... Oh, no, I got super sick and I thought I had COVID. Uh, and then I didn't have a bowl of cereal one day and I was fine. And I was like, oh, no. Um, uh, yeah. And, and you've been fine ever since? Well, I mean, no, I, sometimes I still eat dairy and I get oh, sick, sure. but um, like, how no, I, have, I, have, I take the like, lactate pills, but yeah, like what, I mean, my 2020 was worse than anyone else's out there. I'll say that for sure. I don't yeah, care you how keep many saying that. Lost. Even off camera, I, you keep saying yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> being like, not being able to eat. I know about you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, I also have learned there's a staggering amount about lactose in the preceding four years because um, it turns out it doesn't just mean cheese. It very specifically means the sugar in cheese. Uh, so like cheeses like Parmesan and cheddar, if they're aged decently, they don't have any more lactose in them and I can eat them and be fine. Oh, okay. That makes perfect sense because I've always, I always just honestly thought people were lying a little bit when they were like, Parmesan's fine. And I'm like, what are you talking about? The cheesiest yeah. of cheeses? Right. Yeah. The sprinkles like, I... of cheese? Like, there's no yeah. way, but that makes perfect sense. Yeah. I remember I was at, all my stories are Costco now, and that's a bummer. Uh, no, I'm that's just fine. fully, uh, fully a dad. Um, I was at Costco and they had like Parmesan crisps. And they were like, made with real cheese, no lactose. And I tweeted this at the time because that was how long ago it was. And I was like, do I not know what lactose is? Because I was not lactose intolerant yet. And a bunch of people were like, no, you don't. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, so 
that's a fun thing. Love, anyway, love a yeah, fun I joke tweet that you get an earnest answer I can't, answer for I can't just on a grow. whim. The devastating thing is, you know, like cold pizza, great. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't just like on a whim, just like grab a piece and eat it. Like I have to like have pills so that I can eat like pizza. And like, it gets never just like a, oh, spur of the moment, I'll have something, like a little snack. Like I have to like plan ahead. Getting older, that really My life's is, very hard. <laughs> that really is it overall with getting older, right? Is it's just like the spontaneity, yeah. like it's, you just lose some of the spontaneity of youth, right? Where it's like, you just have to plan ahead a little bit for a little bit of everything where it's like, oh, like I'm, I'm saving that money. So I can't just like hop on a plane to do something or like, mm-hmm. yeah, like I gotta, I gotta take these pills beforehand or like, oh, I got, I got therapy at this time. So like, I can't go to lunch. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just like, it's yes. a series of your life getting a little more scheduled scheduled either way scheduled? i mean i feel like i think with all of your like look how fancy actor i am like i feel like scheduled is the right way to go yeah me too i'm really trying to make people think that that would make my life so much better <laughs> if people if if like like people who looked like me like white dudes on the internet thought you were really stuck up and full of yourself it would make your life a lot better i think if actually no just like, you saying it like that i'm like my life would be so much worse because people would be asking yes. film takes and things like that oh, <laughs> I yeah like... letterbox would come to you and be like name your four best movies yeah like, and people are not gonna nightmare. like the answer do you genuinely want to no. know what my answer would be my four favorite absolutely movies? i do yeah twister go. san andreas um the rock movie We're out the gate wild i'm sorry i didn't hear three because i was so stunned by san andreas it was just two it was twister the 1997 movie yep. with bill paxton yep. and helen hunt san they're andreas. making a sequel it's called twisters i um, know continue it's okay. i'm i'm trepidatious but i'm gonna watch um then probably uh the goofy movie uh would be number three and then um i am gonna go with something fun and something that i've seen recently which is going to be the muppets christmas carol oh fantastic round yeah. though like Thank what a you. what a triumph um, i feel so strongly yeah. about those being my four favorite movies <laughs> i love it uh, those Thank are you. those are choices for sure i tell you Thank what i you, like your Jordan. choices better i like your choices better than a lot of the like have you seen this like movie from 1932 that changed everything it's like yes. no of course i haven't I've I've seen talkies. How about that? Um, <laughs> you don't like that? What's that one with the where the missile gets stuck in the moon? Oh yeah, I no, I couldn't. Does it have a name? I thought it was missile gets stuck know. in the moon. That um, one's on yeah. there too. Actually, I take yeah, that one. I take the Goofy yes. movie out, and it's that one. <laughs> it's missile in moon movie. Perfect. Missile in moon movie. Um, no notes. Um, so quiet. That's what I like about it. <laughs> it just gives you a lot of time to think about. The moon? I don't know what the movie is about. Probably <laughs> racism. They usually were back then. Um, uh, I have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> I just looked down at my notes and I have the book underlined. We've already talked about that. Oh, the have book. you ever seen Garth and Cat on SNL? Mm-hmm. It was. I'm sure I have at some point. It's not ringing a bell at this moment. Fred Armisen and Kristen Wiig would come out as a duo on um uh, sorry really distracted by the slow motion video of you getting real close and doing this i don't know what it was in reference to um Couldn't tell but, you. yep i can't wait to find out the, the fun thing about this interview is all of my interviews are fever dreams that like at the end of it like i'm like i don't i don't know what happened for the last hour uh, but this sure. one really feels like a fever dream um Garth and Cat, it's Kristen Wiig, Fred Armisen they come out in, as like a singing duo on oh, yes. uh, update that's how you and Nana at the end of the episode felt to me of just like, like they are, because one of them is singing improvised, improvising a song and the other is basically watching their mouth to like try and sing along with them. And your ability to pull those two, like pull her song, that feels generous, uh, into like uh, uh, your own. Masterpiece. Incredible. Yes. <laughs> Uh, um, uh, thank you so much. I, I appreciate that. It was like the most bizarre way to end that episode in just like in a in a headspace of being like literally getting beat up on uh, on camera for an hour and then to just sort of like get my hair pet and sing a sing a song like I literally I think we cut and I, we literally were just like what just happened? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Somebody tell me um, and I'm happy that we have the footage so that way we know. 
Oh man, this is going to be a fun one too. Cause I, after get my hair, you cut out completely and then came back to somebody tell me. So like, uh, who knows what happened in the middle of that? I can't wait to find out. Um, uh, yeah. I, one of the things that I really love about the episode, uh, cause I don't want you to repeat what the answer was. It's going to be more fun for me to find out. I was going to say the old fashioned way, but that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, um, the old fashioned way where you send a letter and you wait for it to come back to you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, if you could just write down all of your answers and then I'll just make a TikTok where I read them. Um, I and love you're that. How not fun. Not at all. What a fun <laughs> interview that would be. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I love about the, uh, 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 specifically the Nana episode is it gets to like that 11, like that, like, it's so wild. Um, but you and Lisa, I think because you are such like comedy pros, know to ratchet it back down so that you can then build it back up and you get it in that like clicky of the nails moment, the like moment where the two of you are like, it's me and you against the world, like just like such brilliant comedy. Um, and just like like should be taught in like at taught at UCB level comedy. That's that very that's very kind of you to say. I uh, I think more than anything, like in terms of like thinking about how those moments happen, and I'd be interested to hear Lisa's answer to this too. Uh, but I I would imagine it's similar based on sort of like you know, I, anyways, who knows? I'll speak for myself. It is. Uh, uh, it really is just like that metronome of like in comedy, uh, they talk a lot about like resting the game, like finding what the funny thing is and then resting it. And so especially with an episode like this, it was like very on on the mind of like finding those moments of, of rest, especially like we got to like the 20 minute mark of us just like it, of it being so tense and so wild that uh, like uh, having that moment of like true true breathing um i you know there were i think a couple moments at the end in reading the cards of like uh, uh finding the reasons for the character to do something um that were just like very helpful and i mean like on that note as well like you know i think something uh that was like so so beautiful and so like um uh, something that was so found in the moment that I was so grateful for was with the when it came to like drinking the mug uh, of just liquid. Um, I had this thought of like as somebody that's like my stepdaughter's here, like I can't just drink it. Like as a as, like the the character would not just like drink this mug and embarrass themselves just because this person is said to, especially after everything that's happened. And so having that countdown come, um, I and I even afterwards, Lisa was like, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know how hard to push. It. I was like, no, I wanted to do it. I actively, the second that it got brought up, I was like, that is something I want to do. I just have to have a very strong reason uh, to do it. And the countdown, I just thought was like such a stroke of genius huh. beyond it being like the countdown itself being so funny, like going to a countdown, I just thought was the most brilliant thing in the world. Over under how much did we get of that? <laughs> Uh, be, uh, so much of it, um, all the way up to the countdown was genius beyond it. And, uh, uh then I lost it. So like almost the whole thing, um, look at uh, us, we're getting, getting better and closer and closer, <laughs> getting closer and closer. One of these times we're going to have an interview that just like seamless and we're not going to know what to do with ourselves. Um, no, we're not. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know if you said it cause your audio cut out, but the countdown the fact that it was foresight, too many blueberries, like the fact that it was like puns within the countdown of like, uh, um, God, what are that? What's called when a word sounds the same? Homonyms. Uh, oh, when yeah. it was like homonyms in the countdown, I just like incredible. Like it was so brilliant. What? Yeah. Um, the, 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 the sharpness to have like, not only like, I'm going to have a countdown, but I'm going to have it be the weirdest countdown you've ever heard. Um, yeah, Elisa Gilroy special, like truly so brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I have seen, because I've seen people that you know that were like, it's the best improv that's ever been filmed. Um, and like, like, so it's not just like a clown like me saying that. It is genuinely clown, like you're a journalist yeah. professor. Okay. Well, certainly not anymore. At the um, collegiate uh, level. Uh, so that actually means more. Yeah. Uh, 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 mm, um, uh, well, so first of all, people will get very upset. I don't care anymore because I'm fully out of academia, but people get very upset if I said that I was a professor because I technically wasn't. It's a title that you have to reach, but I feel mm. fine angering those people. So I was a professor. Um, yeah. You were, uh, you were the head of a department. 
Yeah. At Big Ten uh, University. Was, That's what I keep saying. I got... I was at UT, so like it was. Yes. That's big. Um, I mean, that's Big Twelve. I think I don't actually know sports uh, you that well. Of, um, you were the head of journalism at at UT. Yeah, yeah. Eat it, Kathleen McElroy. I don't know Sorry, if she's still Kathleen. there or not. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I I got so close to finishing my PhD. It's hard. So close. It was so hard, and it cost me so much money. And yes. now, but the thing is, um, I'm. Uh, all but dissertation so like I finished like all my coursework I I, I say that like I'm gonna go back I'm not uh, but so now in like resumes I put PhD ABD so that it just has like more letters and seems more impressive and I just hope that no one asks me about it uh, that I is would my imagine, I, I truly would imagine that that gets like 95% of the time people are like amazing whoa yeah. an extra yeah. oh. PhD <laughs> yeah more letters I'm certainly not gonna ask what those mean because then I'll look foolish uh, so like that's that's my strategy um, yeah, I think it's a smart one. Yeah. Um, oh, we got we got a little bit of time left. I was about to like start to wrap things up, but we're we're good to go. Um, Five whole uh, minutes. Look at this. Yeah. So much, so much time. Um, uh, I am now just trying to like piece through what any of these notes mean. Uh, some of them I do. Know. Oh, here's a good one. If you were in the other spot, uh, mm -hmm. do you have like a makeup you would like you would like? Not necessarily, but like like a character in mind. But like, is there something like? Do you want full prosthetic? Do you want the more Lisa Gilroy like uh, 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 like tapered down look? Do you want a puppet? What's your What's your vibe? Man, if you were in the other chair. It's so hard. I do on occasion, like playing really big characters. But like, again, like, I don't envy anybody that's coming into my chair. You know what I mean? Like, I, I genuinely am like in the position that I would want to be. I love voice of reasoning. I think it is something that is overall, it's like not the shinier position, but it is so fun. And I think like, there's, there's no reason for it to be like the boring position to take. It is like, I think, so fun and so fulfilling like getting to help flesh out a character that being said if i if i had to be a character if i had to get in prosthetics or hair and makeup i i don't know i'm like if i'm gonna do it i'd like to do it i think i'd like to be in like zach or Allie, like full full mm -hmm. prosthetics or have some sort of big transformation like something that i wouldn't ordinarily pick for myself because i also think like i really like big juxtaposition comedy so i think it'd be fun to play a more like neutral character in like a pretty huge hair and makeup piece i don't know it's so hard to say like again i truly do not envy a single person that uh uh <laughs> that was that came in to get interviewed i'm like it, they have it's such a hard job from my perspective like having to create something like new and fully fleshed out in the moment it's uh, do you have one that you would be are you like this is something that Ooh. i would like to do um boy i was not prepared for you to ask me a question even though I i'm so often, sorry like, um, no I, I i love it it's delightful yeah no um i think similar vibes as you like i would love like because i've never done like a full prosthetic that seems like it would be very fun to just like um I, I, the tommy shrigley one is so upsetting and like in so many ways i mean like how could you not want that to be the thing? Like, hey, make me as weird and bad as you can. Um, yeah. And, but also, I mean, we almost got sort of what you just described in Princess Emily, because there was that moment where um, where she was like, what if I was just like, a, like I sold mortgages? And that's just, this. she just caught me on a weird day or whatever, like her almost character was. Thank goodness we got Princess Emily. But um, yeah. yeah, that would have been, it would be very fun to get just like, no, I'm a normal person who has a pig face. Um, and you know what? I'm wondering too, with ones like those, I'm like, does that work better in an audio medium where you're describing something crazy as opposed to like physically getting to see it? There is just something really wonderful about seeing somebody completely disappear into a character, even if it's a character that like, is based on a look like typecast you know what i mean mm -hmm. like there is something so wonderful about watching somebody just like totally disappear into that um and i think like the the hmu team really was so spectacular that to not take advantage of that is like feels like a crime you know like and everybody really really did um okay i know what i would want for my okay. hair and makeup i want to yes. be all skin <laughs> 
I would like to be all skin, please. <laughs> like, okay, all right. Um, no eyes, no mouth. I just want to be um, oh. like in oh, Hunger okay. Games. Those, um, I forget what they're called. Did you read Hunger Games? Did you read no. Hunger Games, Jordan? I would no. want to be one I'm of the creatures. Forty from years Games. old. Um, <laughs> Your kid is going to be like, read to me Hunger Games. You're going to read it, and then you're going to come back and say, "I'm sorry." Yeah. You're, you're, I didn't say it wasn't good, just that I was not the target audience at like 30 or whatever when it came out. Everyone's the target audience. I feel so strongly about that. All right. My sincerest apologies then. Thank How you, do you for Did you enjoy that. President Snow's Come to Journey? Ballad of the... Songbirds and Snakes, yes! <laughs> yeah, that was it. <laughs> I love Rachel Ziegler. I think her voice is the most beautiful voice I've ever heard in the entire world. She's in, She's got a voice of an angel. And a bird, and I love birds. <laughs> it's a good thing I have one in my room. Um, uh, look that at that. True. Full circle <laughs> to the beginning of the interview. Um, uh, oh, and that is 12 30 because my alarm for my antidepressant just went off. So look at look. us. Yeah. Um, uh, fuck this month. If folks mm-hmm. wanted to buy tickets to see you perform, they can do that and see it on the internet. Is that um, true? Uh, yeah, I have a ticket. I'm super excited about it. Jordan! Wow! Okay, yeah. thank you for getting a ticket. I didn't know that that was a thing. Um, $15. Yeah. Crazy deal. Like, That's awesome! <laughs> thank you for saying is, that. I never would have known. Who else? You shared the link. Uh, who else is on the show? Did, with I, you then? Yes. did I share an actual link to this? I think so. Uh, okay. sh- I think maybe you just had it in your story. Well, can I stand and, by like, it? In- I- I thought I was selling tickets because I know what's happening at Dynasty Typewriter, but I, and I do know that they do do, um, uh, live streams on occasion. I didn't realize that this show was live streaming, um, but that's great to know and amazing. And I'll, I'll see you there. You'll see me there. Yeah. Very excited. It's full seven days after it airs to watch it. Can't wait. Incredible. Uh, Do you remember anyone else who was on the show with you? I, it's fine if you don't. Izzy is on on the show. There you go. Um, Which will be lovely uh, because we were texting about it. Which will be lovely Look indeed. You're probably wow. still talking. It's Jordan Brown is frozen. Couldn't tell you. Wow. It's not hey. me. Did you hear me? <laughs> I got it's not me. Um, okay. So I, I, I don't know what that, that's in reference to. That's a fun little uh, Easter egg for yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go rewatch this whole interview right now. I can't wait. <laughs> Dick, thank you so much for joining me again. Jordan, um, thank you for having me. Uh, a highlight of sort of my bi-weekly schedule, uh, getting to chit-chat with you at this point, because it's a pattern. Well, twice is sort yeah. of a coincidence. Three times is a pattern. So I'll see you. So, I'll see you soon. Yes. Look and, at us. Uh, I, uh, the fun thing is if you're like, has Jordan gotten better at ending interviews? He hasn't. He has not figured it out. So I'm going to hit stop Amazing. recording. I then it's going to be great because the, the video and audio is going to immediately sync back up and we're going to be great. So... Right. Look at Thank us. Thank you. Thank you.